So I've been talking about this like a broken record for well over a decade now. I talked about it in my last video, and it's the idea that progressive overload is the primary driver of muscle growth. It's the ultimate bottom line, and that if you wanna get bigger, you need to focus on getting stronger first and foremost, not on getting a pump or feeling the burn or performing a ton of sets or using special fancy lifting techniques, but on adding more weight to the bar over time on all of the key compound lifts in proper form, I should mention that as well. Um, there's just no way around that, okay? A stronger muscle is a bigger muscle and training for improved performance is the fastest way to put on size, especially if you're in the first two to three years of training. But a lot of people get confused on this in that they see somebody at the gym who might not be that strong and is lifting less weight than they are, yet they clearly look bigger and more muscular, which can obviously be kind of frustrating. Or the opposite can be true as well, okay? You can have uh, someone who is lifting fairly impressive weights, but doesn't seem to be carrying the right amount of muscle relative to how much weight they're lifting. So if strength equals size, then how can that be? Well, the answer is pretty simple, and it's that strength does equal size to a very large degree, but it's relative to the individual, meaning that as you get stronger, you will get bigger, but the degree of strength development that's gonna be required for you to look a certain way in terms of overall muscularity won't necessarily be the same as the next guy. Okay, so just because you're squatting 315 pounds for reps, that doesn't mean that your legs are automatically gonna be the same size as everybody else out there who's also squatting 315 pounds. You can have one guy who squats 315 or even less and has really impressive looking legs and another guy who squats 315 but doesn't look nearly as impressive. When we're talking about muscle growth, we have to be realistic and we have to acknowledge the role that genetics play in the process, which means that some people just respond faster to training and are gonna have a bigger hypertrophic response to a certain level of strength. Whereas some people won't respond quite as well and they're gonna to need to spend more time developing their strength in order to reach a similar level. And aside from the overall hypertrophic response to training, another huge factor is body structure. Uh, because of factors like limb length, uh, muscle insertion points, wrist size, ankle size, uh, waist size, clavicle width, um, as well as height, different amounts of muscle can look quite a bit different on each given person. So you could have an upper arm that measures, say, 15 inches flexed, but because of a combination of all these different factors, proportionally, it could look just as muscular as somebody else with a 17-inch arm. Maybe your arm length is shorter, which makes the biceps and triceps seem wider. Uh, maybe your biceps insert further down towards your elbow so that you have a longer muscle belly. Um, and maybe you have a smaller wrist as well, which creates the illusion of a bigger upper arm. All of those things are gonna give you an advantage and you aren't gonna need to put on as much actual muscle in order to have impressively muscular looking arms. Remember that physique aesthetics are partly about your objective measurements on paper, but at the end of the day, it ultimately just comes down to how muscular you look visually. And there's a certain illusory aspect involved in that. So if someone has a more favorable body structure, they might not have to add as much weight to the bar or gain as much total muscle mass in order to achieve a certain level of visual muscularity. Um, another factor to look at is leverages. So depending on what exercise someone is performing, because of their body structure and the leverages that are involved in that lift, they might just be better suited to certain lifts. And so even though they've built up to a fairly large amount of weight compared to someone else, they might not appear as big in response to that amount of weight they're lifting as you would expect because they've already got a built-in advantage right from the get-go in that their body was just better suited to moving more weight on that particular exercise. For example, uh, you might see some guys who can deadlift quite a bit of weight but don't really look that big and again, that can be because of the way that their particular body structure is set up, right? Maybe their body structure just allows them to move more weight on that exercise right out of the gate. Um, the other thing to consider if you're just looking around your gym and comparing yourself to the other lifters that you see is that you don't know what any given person's specific training goals are. In other words, some people might just be more focused in on certain lifts than others, and they might have spent more time building up their strength on those particular lifts. So maybe the guy with the really jacked looking physique is say deadlifting next to someone who isn't as muscular. And so you look at that and you say, well, what's going on here? I thought strength equated to size. So why is that smaller guy deadlifting more weight than the bigger guy? But you have to take a look at their overall training program and take 
everything into account, right? Maybe the first guy does a lot of heavy pull-ups and pull-downs and rows and shrugs and other movements to build up their back musculature um, and they're using a more bodybuilding focused program Whereas maybe the second guy is mainly just focused on building a big deadlift and he doesn't pay as much attention to those other lifts. So in that one instance, things might seem a bit off because the one guy is smaller but moving more weight. But again, the overall training program has to be considered. And then beyond those three factors, um, of course, the final factor to consider, which is a huge one, um, is drug use. Okay, you might see guys in the gym who are suspiciously muscular, even though they're not very strong. And a lot of times that can be a dead giveaway that steroids are involved because steroids provide a huge advantage when it comes to uh, putting on muscle mass. I mean, you can literally take steroids and do nothing but sit on the couch and you'll still gain some muscle from it. So don't dis uh, discount the factor of drug use because that will hugely affect the amount of weight that a given person needs to lift in order to achieve a certain level of muscularity. So try not to concern yourself too much uh, with what everyone else in the gym or on YouTube or on Instagram is doing. Strength does equal size for the most part. So just focus on staying consistent with your own program, tracking your workouts on paper and building up a solid strength foundation. And when combined with proper nutrition, you will consistently put on new muscle mass as you add more weight to the bar during those first few years of lifting. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe below if you found this information helpful. If you appreciate the no BS evidence-based content that I put out here and you want to support the channel while optimizing your muscle building and fat burning results at the same time, then make sure to check out my sports nutrition company, Real Science Athletics, which produces 100% research-backed, properly dosed, affordable fitness supplements you can trust, including our pre-workout formula, athletes multivitamin, and fish oil with more top quality products coming soon. Just visit realscienceathletics.com using the link up here or in the description box below. And you can also use coupon code YouTube10 to save 10% off your entire first order. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.